Earlier in our broadcast, we mentioned that the Board of Toll Brothers has elected a new CEO, Executive Vice President Doug Yearly, who takes the top job on June 16th. And right now, I do want to welcome both Yearly and current CEO and founder Bob Toll. Bob will remain executive chairman of the board. Gentlemen, welcome to Street Smart. Great to have you both uh, here with us. Um, Bob, let me start with you. Why now? Why the transition at this point? Why not? <laughs> Doug, Doug just celebrated his 50th birthday. I'm looking forward to celebrating my 70th. I think it's time for a change, besides which I think Doug can do a better job than I'm doing. He is. All right. Well, Doug, what's your first priority in that job? Well, I think we need to regrow the company. It's been a tough five years, and we're seeing great signs of improvement. And we're going to take advantage of the balance sheet, buy a lot of distressed real estate, and uh, grow back the employee base and expand and get back to profitability. So it's, a, it's actually a fun time and a great time to be stepping in because uh, things look pretty bright for us. You know, that's exactly what I was thinking, Bob. At a time like this, when you're, when you're poised to bounce back, uh, really, why would you want to step down? That, that's the most fun part, I would think, the ride back up. Do, do you see it not as quite a V-shaped recovery for Toll Brothers? No, as a matter of fact, I do think it's going to be a V-shaped recovery. But I've, I've done it in 68. I did it in 74. I did it in 80, 81, 82. I did it in 80, 88 through 90. Uh, it's, time to let, it's time to let somebody else do it, especially, as I said earlier, uh, somebody as sharp and good as Doug. And I think he can do it better than I can at this stage of the game. So uh, it's his turn. You know, Doug, you mentioned uh, that you're going to be doing a lot of uh, you know, looking at distressed real estate. You guys have been actually buying um, some properties, or I should say buying or acquiring rights to home lots in the past four months. That was a story we had back in March. I mean, how aggressively will you be out there buying, and are the opportunities that great at this point? Well, we're very opportunistic. We'll take advantage of those opportunities that come along. The banks seem to be freeing up a bunch of uh, bad loans and REO. We have a billion six of cash, uh, so we plan on growing through, uh, through this uh, cycle just as we did back in the early and mid-90s uh, when we expanded the company significantly mm -hmm. uh, because back then we also had cash and we could take advantage of the deal. So we see it happening again, and I think you'll see uh, our land buying accelerate over the next year. Doug, what regions in particular do you think you guys will be eyeing, let's say, over the next 6 to 12 months? Well, we, we love the East. Uh, half our business is between Washington, D.C. and Boston. Uh, that's a lot constrained market, and anything you can get your hands on in that market tends to be gold. So we'll focus there. We'll focus in Florida. We love the uh, long-term play in Florida. Uh, we also like the West Coast a lot, and we're seeing opportunities in Texas. Um, so, uh, you know, many markets throughout the country. It's really an opportunistic uh, play for us. Are, are you seeing those uh, uh, areas as the best dips in which to buy? I mean, do you think other areas have recovered and are already headed back up? Many have. There's other markets, such as Vegas, that uh, are still very slow, and uh, we're not actively looking for land there. But there are many markets that have clearly bottomed out, and there's great opportunities. And the banks seem to be more aggressive in moving off their land. So uh, those with money, like ourselves, it's a great time. Hey, Bob, you know, you've been in the housing market for many decades here, and I, I've just got to ask you, looking back at the last two years, I'm not trying to age you here, I'm not trying to do that, but looking back okay. <laughs> at the last, you know, couple of years here, I mean, do you think that we'll ever see a financial crisis uh, the likes of what we've just kind of lived through here? No, I don't. Uh, only uh, on a uh, statistical uh, basis, um, this one came close to the Great Depression. So uh, when we come out of this and it's all done, I think we'll just call it the Great Recession. But certainly we haven't seen anything like this um, since we've, since we've uh, been alive. And you have to go back to historical precedent to compare it to uh, what happened in, in 29 through 39. So I don't expect that we're going to see this again, but who knows? Mm. What do you guys think about lending and credit right now? I mean, uh, there has been concern. Well, Bob Schiller was on earlier and said the possibility of a double dip is at least there. And uh, lending and credit tightening up is what we see happening with LIBOR OIS. I mean, uh, how, have, uh, how has lending been for you in selling new homes? And Doug, since you're the new guy, I'll ask you. It's not a problem. Uh, our buyers are well healed. and we, we sell more expensive homes. They put about 30 percent down. Uh, they have FICO scores of about 750, uh, so we really haven't seen a problem. The spread between jumbo and conforming has narrowed, 
and uh, that's really not an issue for our buyers. They more, they're more focused on consumer confidence, the ability to sell their own home, um, whether they're uh, concerned about their job, and right, right now consumer confidence is in a pretty good place. But financing is not the issue for us. Doug, five seconds. You guys have some pricing power, and you got to be very quick for me. Yes, we do. In certain markets, we have quite a bit of pricing power. All right, that was quick, and we appreciate your time. Bob, thank you so much. Doug, our thanks My to you as pleasure. well, and congratulations.